Welcome to North Denver, 1978. On the surface, it's a blue-collar slice of Americana, where kids ride bikes in the streets and play Little League Baseball. At least that's how it used to be, before the grabber. Who's the grabber, you ask? A rather theatrical and not very subtle predator who targets children. He's abducted a handful already, and young Finn, played by Mason Thames, is next. Does young Mason have what it takes to survive, or will he end up being just another photo on a missing flyer? The Black Phone is based on a short story by Joe Hill and co-written and directed by Scott Derrickson. Derrickson is no noob to the horror genre, having previously helmed movies like Sinister, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, and Deliver Us from Evil. Derrickson is also responsible for hands down the best direct-to-video Hellraiser film, Inferno. Although Judgment was pretty damn good too. Anyway, The Black Phone hits close to home for me. One of my greatest fears growing up was being abducted. It's all because of that damn Unsolved Mysteries. Horror movies never scared me as a kid. Unsolved Mysteries dramatic reenactments, on the other hand, scarred me for life. There was an episode of Unsolved Mysteries back in the day that featured a story about kids being abducted by someone in a white van. The abductor supposedly left a Polaroid at a gas station depicting a teen girl and a young boy bound and gagged in the back of the van. I can still see the looks on their faces in that Polaroid. Not too long after that, I was shooting hoops down the street from my house, alone, when I noticed a white van creeping by. My blood ran cold, and I ran like hell straight home. I've never told anybody that story, not even my own mother. I only bring this up because the black phone does an excellent job of creating this hazy ambiance around the late 70s, making it look a little dreamy, or kind of like an old memory. And because of this, I can forgive the black phone for some of its lapses in logic, but not all of them. Now, I'm the ultimate proponent for suspending disbelief. Most horror movies, even the really good ones, you have to have an understanding with. You have to understand that some characters are going to make really poor choices that land them in really bad situations. Running upstairs instead of going out the front door, for instance. Or, hey, let's split up and look around. The antagonist will be superhuman sometimes, because they have to. They'll take a bullet or two, but just get right back up. Or, you know, somebody taught them how to drive while they were incarcerated at a mental facility well enough to be able to successfully drive from one town to another, miles apart. The Black Phone wants you to take in stride the fact that the Grabber, who at this point has already abducted several kids and is public enemy number one in this small town, can grab a kid off the street in broad daylight in the middle of a neighborhood with his face painted white and donning a black top hat, toss the kid into the back of his not-at-all-inconspicuous van, and then top it all off by releasing a bunch of black balloons. And nobody sees a thing. Later in the movie, we're just expected to not have any issues at all with the fact that a little girl can immobilize an entire police force into unlawfully breaking into a suspect's home, creating a Nightmare on Elm Street-ish loophole for the grabber to walk free later. Based on a dream she had. Really? Then you have the brother. And I'm not complaining about the brother. I loved every second he was on screen. He's hilarious. The whole brother angle is a riot, as a matter of fact. I'm just not sure that was the intent. Now, I'm not trying to dog the black phone here, just pointing out some things about the film that didn't sit right with me. Maybe my expectations were just a little too high based on the hype machine that social media created for the film. I remember seeing the word masterpiece thrown around. I saw tweets proclaiming that it was a new classic and so on. I could do an entire video just trying to break down the crazy hype that social media creates for some movies and how easily people allow the hype to color their opinion, even if they know the quality of the movie isn't equal to the hype around it. Now, while I wouldn't consider the black phone a masterpiece, far from it, I still think it's worth your time. I love the Ethan Hawke resurgence we've seen lately, and I hope it continues. I've always liked Hawke as an actor. He has this ability to bring, I don't know, an honesty to whatever role he's playing. On paper, the character of the Grabber seems a little thin. There's not much to him, and honestly, he's not even in the movie that much. However, Hawke brings the creepy, and then some. I've not read the short story that the movie is based on, but I've been told that the character of the Creeper in the story is more akin to 
a John Wayne Gacy type. In the case of the movie, I got the impression that they were being a little careful when it came to the Grabber's interactions with Finn. Although it's implied that the Grabber is attracted to his victims in more ways than one. Mason Tame steals the movie as Finn. He delivers a very strong performance. You care about him. You want to see him grow from being this reserved, cowardly kid to man up and fight back, because it's curtains for him if he doesn't. This creates some nicely suspenseful moments. I'm sure most people would give the show stealer award here to Madeline McGraw, who plays Finn's little sister, Gwen. She's good, but the whole foul-mouthed, annoyingly precocious little sister thing... It's ran its course. Finn is paid visits by previous victims of the Grabber, who communicate with him via, you guessed it, a black phone. Why does the Grabber keep a phone down in his dungeon? The victims who appear as bloodied and wounded specters, think sinister, offer Finn moral support, survival tips, and encourage him to fight back while he still can. The makeup effects on the victims go a long way in telling us just how sadistic the Grabber is, and what Finn's fate could look like. The Black Phone has a lot going for it. The performances all around are good, there's ample suspense, and Ethan Hawke makes the Grabber a memorable villain. His masks are really cool too. But just about every time I started to settle into the plot and cheerlead for Finn, something wonky this way would come and pull me right out of the movie. I still recommend The Black Phone, and I'm glad that it's been a success at the box office. The horror genre is in desperate need of new blood, so hopefully The Black Phone's success will help to greenlight some new original IPs. As for the picture quality and sound quality on this new Blu-ray release from Universal Pictures, I thought both were rock solid. I'd give both the picture quality and the sound quality on this release a solid four and a half out of five. As far as extras are concerned, first up we have Ethan Hawke's Evil Turn. It's four minutes and 25 seconds in length. It includes interviews with Ethan Hawke, C. Robert Cargill, Mason Thames, and Ryan Turek. They discuss the character of the Grabber, how excited Hawke was to play the character, how he approached playing the character, and more. Next we have Answering the Call, behind the scenes of the Black Phone. It's 10 minutes and 40 seconds in length. It includes interviews with Ethan Hawke, C. Robert Cargill, Madeline McGraw, Mason Thames, and more. Next, we have Devil in the Design, which is 5 minutes and 15 seconds in length. It includes interviews with Ethan Hawke, production designer Patty Podesta, C. Robert Cargill, set costumer Laurel, Pocuccia O'Hala, Mason Thames, Tom Savini, and more. They discuss recreating the look and fashions of the 1970s, the Grabber Dungeon, his masks, and more. Oh, and by the way, Tom Savini and his assistant Jason Baker designed the Grabber's masks. Next, we have Super 8 Set, which is 1 minute and 48 seconds in length, in which the decision to shoot particular scenes in Super 8 is discussed. We get Shadow Prowler, a short film by Scott Derrickson, two deleted scenes, and an audio commentary with producer, co-writer, and director Scott Derrickson. This is a rock-solid release for the Black Phone from Universal Pictures. Both the picture quality and the sound quality are quite good, and we get some nice extras to boot. If you're a fan of the Black Phone, then this release should be in your collection. Let me know your thoughts on the black phone down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, let me know what your favorite Scott Derrickson film is. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.